Hi, my name is Mariola and this is my channel, Slow Down in Style. Whether we like it or not, we all live in a world of fast fashion and overconsumption of poorly made disposable clothes. All companies are affected by this process and quality of their clothes and their practices are decreasing every year. Unfortunately, as long as we participate in this process, there is demand, so we have the power to change it. That's why I think we should expect high quality clothes. Sometimes it means that you have to shop secondhand. Sometimes you have to wait for the product to go in sale. And sometimes you have to make sacrifice and buy one item instead of four. So today I want to share with you how I shop high quality clothes. What are my priorities? What I look for in the clothes? And what will never make it to my wardrobe? Two elements of high quality clothes are materials and construction. Now I'm quite old fashioned and I like my natural materials, which is wool, including cashmere and merino, cotton, linen and silk. Why do I choose natural materials? First of all, they are biodegradable, so they are friendly to our planet. They're durable and they feel more superior on your skin to their synthetic equivalent. Of course, they look much more uh, luxurious as well, especially when you think of uh, cashmere, wool, silk. When it comes to material that is close to your skin, that is directly on your skin, you should always choose natural material that is breathable. It's really important for your skin, for the health of your skin. Cotton is the most popular fiber in the fashion industry. In general, it's really hard to find a good quality cotton nowadays. If you're willing to spend a little bit more, look for Pima cotton. It's a type of cotton that has much longer and softer fibers and clothes made from this fabric will be naturally more durable, stronger, but also look more luxurious. Of course, organic cotton from reliable source is a good option. Other than that, it's really hard to determine quality of cotton, uh, for example, cotton t-shirt, before taking it home, wearing and washing a few times. Use a shop that you can trust, or uh, ask for recommendations. I haven't been disappointed with uh, cotton t-shirts or jumpers from Arquette or Cos. They don't stretch, they don't shrink. Look for shops that are transparent about the material, production and sustainability. I appreciate websites that give a lot of information about size and fit. I don't wear a lot of jeans, but I will always choose 100% cotton over anything else, over any blends, because you get a very nice, rigid and durable piece that will fall nicely and in my opinion it looks more elegant and chic. Another material really worth investing in for a long-lasting and beautiful wardrobe is cashmere. Cashmere is much warmer than wool. It's beautiful, it's very luxurious, and I find personally easier to care for, to wash, than wool. I want to make a separate video about jumpers for winter, especially wool and cashmere. So forgive me, I'm not gonna uh, talk too much about it. I just want to say there are different grades of cashmere. And probably if you find a supermarket or a high street inexpensive cashmere jumper or scarf, uh, gloves, etc. It's probably made from a lower grade of cashmere and that means the fibers are shorter and thinner. Most likely it's one ply, which means it's just one thread. So it's much weaker and less durable. So pay attention to the information that you find on the care label about or on the website about the cashmere. Yes, every cashmere will uh, bubble, will peel, but not equally. Uh, I have here, a cashmere jumper by Jigsaw. I left it on the wrong side on purpose to show you. And by the way, I didn't clean that jumper, I didn't shave it. There's so minimal peeling that will naturally occur, but 
as you can see, there is almost nothing here. I can see something. So the cashmere jumper or scarf made from high grade fibers uh, will have much less peeling and will be much softer. Try to test it on very sensitive uh, part of your skin, which is usually your neck. If the material is not super soft and you feel some roughness, that means it's a low grade cashmere and most likely it will not look very good after a few wears and especially after wash. The next natural material that I love, especially in summer, is linen. Linen is great for clothes, it's great for bedding. I absolutely love my linen bedding. It's luxuriously soft and it's very healthy for your skin. I personally don't trust shops and brands that sell linen pieces that are almost sheer. For me that is a sign of saving money on the quality of the piece. Especially when it comes to trousers and dresses, you want the material to be substantial, to have some weight to it. For example, if you have an A-line dress, it should have the weight, it should have some movement. So make sure there is a lot of material. If your A-line dress looks like a slip dress, that means they tried to use as little material as possible and you can't trust them. When it comes to silk, it's not my favorite uh, material because I find it quite challenging and it's not very suitable for my lifestyle, but nothing can beat a beautiful silk shirt or a cami for your work or for an evening attire. So if you're looking for silk pieces, make sure you buy 100% mulberry silk and choose a trusted brand. Read customer reviews. I find this uh, to be one of the best ways to determine the quality at least when you buy online and then when you receive the item you can decide for yourself silk shirts and garments in general are expensive so think twice before you make the decision also when you buy silk or cashmere uh, check return policy if you can try it at home and see if you like it if it works for your wardrobe and if it doesn't you can always return it i forgot to mention leather whether it's a leather jacket or trousers they add so much texture and personality to your outfit but leather is also very controversial and that's why we should be very smart and sensible about buying leather. Avoid buying high street cheap garments that fall apart after a few years of wear. You can find good quality investment pieces at Boda Skins, All Saints, uh, Kos or Massimo Dutti, but most of all vintage and secondhand shops. Sometimes fashion designers use synthetics like polyester to blend with natural materials uh, like wool for example in uh, winter coats to increase their durability and that's okay as long as the ratio is kept to the very minimum in my book more than 20 percent of polyester is a no-no um, unless I really love the coat and there is some alpaca or cashmere in it, then I could go as low as 30% of polyester, but that's it. Any winter coat that has 50% of polyester and more will not keep you warm and will peel like crazy. I did say that I always aim for 100% of natural fabric in, in the garment. Having said that, I'm okay with some blends as long as the other material is also natural. So for example, uh, wool and cashmere, that's a beautiful blend. Uh, cotton and linen, silk and cotton, or sometimes silk and wool. Uh, you still have your very high quality composition, but sometimes, thanks to the blends, you get a very different properties of, of the garment. So for example, a blend of linen and silk can give you beautiful and smooth linen blazer that 100% linen couldn't achieve. But be aware of blends of, uh, I think this is one of the worst, cashmere and polyester. We already pay so much money for cashmere. Ruining that with some polyester is just a crime. So I prefer to pay a little bit more or wait for that item to save up instead of buying that with polyester. 
The second very important element of your garment is construction. So how was it made? How was it finished? How is it presented to you? Before you try it on and you fall in love with the piece, start with the care label. Look at the composition and how to care for the garment. I already mentioned the material, so I would personally advise to go for anything that's made from natural materials, except if it's a blend, don't go higher than 20% of polyester. Now, when it comes to blazers, very often wool trousers and your coats, it will always be a dry clean, so don't expect anything else. However, if you check a top or a cotton trousers and it says dry clean, there is something wrong with the item. Probably uh, they mixed different types of fabric that doesn't really go together. So just in case they put dry clean only, and so they are safe and now you have to deal with it. Don't go for it, don't buy it, run away. <laughs> dry cleaning is expensive, it's uh, also not good for you. So try to minimize dry cleaning wherever you can. So we've looked at the care label and we are happy with the material and the care instructions. The next thing you need to check is weight. So look for something that's uh, substantial, not see-through unless it's meant to be uh, something like your evening sheer top or it says specifically sheer, semi-sheer, etc. Uh, otherwise, especially when it comes to jumpers, they should be tightly knitted so they're more durable and they're warmer. We have similar situation with t-shirts. They don't have to be thick, especially when they're made from Pima cotton. The material will be more luxurious and soft and most likely fine. Another really important thing, good quality clothes should feel and fall nicely. They should drape nicely on your body. They should feel soft and very comfortable. Uh, so if you have something that's pulling somewhere or it's itchy or something wrong with the seam, straight away take it off and don't even look back. You can already see the quality by touching the material and just looking at it. Uh, but of course there is so much more to it. Check if the item is even, if everything is how it should be. What I mean by it, when I bought my grey coat first online, I ordered it in a smaller size and it came very poorly and strangely constructed. One side was longer and it was kind of overlapping on the other side. So clearly there was something that was done wrong in the production. But I went to the shop, I tried it on in a bigger size and I looked at both sides. As you can see they are even, they fall exactly in the middle. Both sides are of the same length, same with the blazer, with any jacket. Always check when you uh, button up the blazer or the jacket, are the sides the same length? Are the holes in the right place? Because sometimes you have something like that, wait, because sometimes you have something like that because button holes are placed incorrectly. Something that you can use for your tops, your shirts, but even your trousers is to stretch the material along the seams and see if there is any gap, if the stitches are strong, if they stay in place or they come undone. Just pull gently the material and look for any imperfections, something that doesn't look right. The stitching should be strong and it should be very tight, so the threads are very close to each other. One of the easiest ways you can tell the quality of the item is buttons and zippers. The best buttons you can get are wooden, metal or mother of pearl, but I'm being realistic here and I know a lot of garments now have plastic buttons, but I don't think it's a bad thing because they can look really nice and elegant if the company pays attention to details, like a button is made in the same color as the trousers, for example. I have my navy uh, wool and cashmere trousers but they are navy and they have this slight pattern to them so they're not 
simple, cheap uh, plastic buttons. Uh, buttons should be stitched in a clean and secure way. They should look neat, but they should also be strong. When it comes to your cold buttons, they should be reinforced with an extra thread, also to leave some space for that extra material when you close your coat. Uh, I have a very good example how buttons shouldn't be stitched. My wool coat that I mentioned before have the second button from the inside, which is great uh, because that means they are secure and strong. However, the way they've been stitched is so messy and I just can't believe I haven't noticed that in the shop. It's not a deal breaker. It just shows you that it wasn't made in the best way. So for example, here you have plastic buttons, but they um, they have a nice pattern on them and they match uh, in color. So it looks very um, cohesive and elegant. Buttonhole edges should be clean and neat. They should be tightly stitched around. So there shouldn't be any loose thread and nothing should come undone even after a few washes or years of wear. Extra buttons that are attached to your um, trousers, your coat, your blazer, etc., or your shirt is a good indicator that the item was made to last and serve you for years. Some brands attach buttons and some thread. For example, um, there you go. I got this thread from Lily Silk with my cashmere jumper and there is enough to fix any holes and imperfections if you pull some material. So this is a really nice touch, something that can make you feel more secure in case of any moth invasion or uh, just any emergency. Oh, the zippers. Look for good quality metal zippers. Apparently the best brand is YKK. I have a few items in my wardrobe, uh, some new, some old, vintage, that have these zippers. So when you see the brand, it's a good sign. The stitching around the zipper should be clean, in the same color as the garment, and make sure the zipper is secure especially when it comes to trousers. The zipper is the area where everyone can see it. So make sure all the stitching is elegant and there is no loose threads. Again, if there are some threads post-production that someone forgot to cut, just cut them off and forget about it. If everything else looks uh, solid and clean, uh, that's a good sign. <laughs> Something that I love to do when I go to a high quality shop but especially vintage shops when I find a great quality items is to look inside. Always look inside because this is where you find the things that companies didn't want you to see. First of all, stitching. Again, stitching. For example, when you have uh, pockets in your trousers, uh, there should be a very nice finishing around the pocket. Again, look for very clean stitching, no loose threads, all the fabric, all the material that's inside should be finished nicely, should be neat and clean. I don't know how many times I use these words, but this is a key to good uh, craftsmanship. Some trousers have lining, just half of the leg. So basically what, uh, whatever material there is inside, it should be finished nicely. That's a clear indication of how much care, time and material went into making that uh, item. So it's nice and pleasant to the eye. Look for French seams and something that I have in my trench coat, a bias, wait, bias bound seam. It's very elegant, very nice. They much more time consuming and there is much more material that goes into it. But that only means that the garment was made in the best way possible. The bias bound seam. Uh, I don't want to talk too much about the seams because not everyone finds it interesting. But when you see something like that, I think you will appreciate in your shirt, your unlined jacket, blazer, etc. Um, as you can see in my trench coat, because it's a reversible coat, theoretically, I can be using it on both sides, uh, which I never did. But when you look at the finishing, it's so beautiful. You can really wear it 
on the outside. So I think it just makes you feel a little bit more special. While we inside the garment, a very important element of the jackets, blazers, coats is lining. Lining should be made in a breathable material, either viscose, uh, silk or cotton. Again, lining should be sewn in perfectly so you can see where it ends. It should become one with the garment. Very important thing with lining is that there is some excess material. So there should always be a pleat at the back so when you put on the blazer it doesn't break. Same at the bottom of the jacket and in the sleeves. So everywhere there should be some extra material so it doesn't pull when you put it on, but it's also very comfortable to wear. Uh, when it comes to blazers and coats actually that have vents at the back, make sure you can't see the lining from the outside. It shouldn't be visible, it should be tightly stitched and in its place. I love linings. I always pay attention to the color, to material, how they are preserved when I buy them vintage, for example. A very easy way to determine quality of the garment is a pattern. This is something I always pay attention to and I never buy a pattern like stripe or check that doesn't align at the seam. I have a really great example here from Lily Silk. I must say these wool trousers are made incredibly well. <laughs> from the zipper to the buttons to the seams, everything inside uh, has impeccable uh, seams. Um, a really good piece of clothing. And the cherry on top is the pattern that aligns beautifully on the seams. A very last thing that I forgot to mention before, something that you can get usually in more expensive trousers and skirts is the hem allowance. Again, it's not a rule. I've seen that on Zara trousers or H&M trousers, but in general, fast fashion shops don't do that because they try to save as much material as, as possible. I personally really love the look of a really thick hem. It's interesting and it gives you that extra flexibility. So it's a good sign, but it's not a rule. So how to find good quality clothes? The best and the cheapest way to start is your wardrobe. So uh, look at your clothes, inspect them thoroughly, look inside, look at your pockets, look at your zippers, all the things that I discussed, but the more you practice, the more you uh, notice certain things, certain imperfections, the more you will be aware of them in the future when you want to buy something new. You can also go to a department store, brands that have very good fabric, very well-made clothes. And again, have a look, touch the fabric. This is the best way to see the quality material. Try it on, see how it falls. Even if it's not your style and you would never buy it, it's a good practice and it gives you a lot of information. And if you are educated and you understand the fabric or how things should be made, you expect more. You can't be easily fooled with some cheap stuff. So that's why it's so important to practice, practice and practice. Shopping secondhand, whether it's vintage shop, consignment or charity shop, is so much more superior to buying new because whatever bad could have happened has already happened. You're only looking at selected items that were made well, unless you have some old items from Zara, H&M, etc. But in general, if you're buying a knitwear or wool coat and it's in a good condition, you can be sure it's made really well because it's stood the test of time and it still looks great. Now, when it comes to buying new, as a rule of thumb, more expensive clothes mean better quality, but not always. Be very careful with trusting a brand that you know with every single item. Unfortunately, all the shops and the whole fashion industry has been affected by the fast fashion trend and they all try to make the most profit. So be very, very careful, even when it comes to more high-end or designer clothes. 
I really appreciate and I like Kos. In general, they have good quality clothes for a fair price, I would say. But very recently, I returned a pair of wool trousers because I didn't like the quality of material. First of all, it was very thin and it was scratchy. There was no lining inside as well that um, more expensive uh, brands put inside. So um, if you have sensitive skin like me, you don't suffer. Don't trust brands. I know we all have our favorite brands, but uh, trust your judgment, trust your experience and trust your hand. <laughs> Some high street shops have a premium line where you can find a better quality clothes. For example, H&M but be very careful because I've noticed the quality decreased as well. I have a pair of trousers that I purchased, I can't remember, but I think four years ago. They are made uh, incredibly well. All the stitches, the seams, pockets, the hem allowance, everything is so good. But when I check some uh, cashmere wool, or tailored pieces from their premium line. Now, I'm not happy with the quality. Try if you want. Uh, the returns are usually very easy, but again, trust your judgment. Don't be fooled with a premium uh, label. Always check Uniqlo. Things that are worth trying are their cotton t-shirts, button-up shirts, loungewear, cashmere, especially hats and gloves and kids section. Uh, they do a lot of collaborations. My favorite is with designer Jill Zander and JW Anderson, which I got my trench coat from. Another good one is Autograph by M&S. Uh, they have a great selection of very decent cashmere, wool and silk. I love the lingerie section too, including Rose's line. M&S is an English brand that is quite traditional and only injects some trends to their classic collection. Right, so that's it from me today. I hope this video has been useful for you. I know it's a lot of information and it can be overwhelming, but as I said, the more you practice, the less satisfied you will be with um, fast fashion disposable clothes and you will always want more. Let's all try to be more conscious about uh, what we buy and how much we buy. And remember, less is more. You don't need a ton of clothes to look stylish, uh, put together and chic. You just need a very high quality clothes that are right for you. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And please share with us how you find the best quality clothes. I'm sure we can all use some tips. Thank you so much for watching again and I see you in my next video. Bye!